10 at 10 continues with No Wait Weather. What a beautiful night to head out to the park or oh, watch gorgeous. the kids play ball. Or see some hot rods. Or see hot rods. And, <laughs> you know, in weather like this, you don't need doors or a roof on your hot no, rod. No, you you're, don't. <laughs> you're all set. Take a look at the outside conditions right now in the FM area. We have 69 degrees. The wind is calm. And Moorhead right now holding in the low 70s at 72. And again, we are fairly dry, but dew points have risen up into the 60s. Here is a look at Grand Forks. A few high clouds still drifting overhead as we enjoy that late night twilight. 69 there as well. Calm wind and a 56 degree dew point temperature. And generally, that's about average for this time of the year as far as dew points are concerned. 70 in Sisseton, Fergus, and Detroit Lakes. Thief River also at that same reading. 64 in Langdon and a low 70s for both Valley City and Jamestown. Thunderstorms pretty much kept themselves confined and you could actually see these cells that were out to the east of the FM area tonight from a distance. Really glorious uh, cumuliform clouds up lightning rolling through the central Dakotas. It's moving south and we do have one cell that's just passing over the Devil's Lake area south of the Minnewaukan area heading towards Cheyenne. And these storms are kicking off a few clouds as well. Now clouds limit our ability to see the sky at night and that could be a detriment because tonight we have a chance at seeing the northern lights once again. Let's talk about these clouds and what our forecast model shows happening to them. As we head through the overnight, our chance of thunder showers really diminishes, and the sky's clear for many of us. There will be a better chance of more cloudiness out in our western counties for the James River Valley, maybe the western Cheyenne River Valley. But by and large, the skies should at least break a little bit for that viewing of the northern lights. Now, as temperatures slip down into the low 60s, really getting away from city lights and well after midnight when things are really dark, as we just noticed, the twilight is still out there. That'll limit our viewing. And again, the solar storm quite strong. You can always check the latest at valleynewslive.com. Go to our weather page and on our menu there, look for Aurora Borealis button and that will give you the latest on that. Now, as we go through the midday hours, temperatures rise towards 80 degrees, a lot of mid 70s in Lakes Country. And again, pop up showers here and there, hit and miss, thunderstorms, nothing overly severe as expected. But this time of the year, we always could have that. And as we head into the late afternoon and early evening, we'll have low to mid 80s in some places, more comfortable 70s late tomorrow on your Friday night. By and large, a dry day once again for most in the Red River Valley. 61 to start your day in Fargo-Moorhead, 78 already by the lunch hour, and rising into the low to mid 80s for the afternoon. Light winds, one or two thunderstorms, sunset time after 9 o'clock still. All right, 80 for Roseau tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Langdon, 77 at 3 o'clock. And our best chance of hit and miss thunderstorms will be to the far east, places east of Detroit Lakes and Bemidji, where we'll be in the 70s. Take a look at Lakes Country, and here is a beautiful picture. Tracy Hayes capturing the crane in the fog and the morning sunrise. Gorgeous shot. Thanks for sharing. Saturday looks like a keeper of a day, a summer-like day. Run through the sprinkler, 86 degrees. Stay cool on Sunday as well, mid-80s, with a slight chance of scattered thunderstorms. Those weekend storms could be strong to severe. Next week starts out quiet but hot Ooh. with upper 80s for many and a 90-degree reading or two including here in the FM area. It is summer, that's for sure. It is. All right, thanks, Hutch. You're welcome. Well, still ahead for us tonight, if you have one of these women's sport tops, we'll tell you why you might want to return it. But first, a look at the number of people unknowingly living with HIV.